The 2019 25th Anniversary National Legends Cars Championship is sponsored by 24-Hour Solutions. No problems, only solutions. Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to a sunny Brands Hatch, the perfect weather, the perfect venue for the opening to the 25th anniversary Legends Cars Championship, the 2019 season about to get underway. Here's how the calendar shapes up in this 25th anniversary season, kicking off here at Brands Hatch on the Isle of Anglesey for rounds three and four, back to Brands for the American Speed Fest, Donington Park, Snetterton, the run into the end of the championship, sees us at Pembrey in October and back here at Brands for our big finale in November. Phil Cooper, happy birthday. 20, 25th anniversary of Legends Cars Race, 25 great years. Yes, who would have thought? And I've been to every race, my goodness, uh, and I'm still here. Uh, yeah, it, it's been fantastic. 25 years of entertainment for both driver and spectator alike. And when you compare with an awful lot of other series that have come and gone, we still have a very healthy grid. I couldn't be happier. When you think that the only changes we've made are mainly cosmetic, we've had a few couple of tweaks for the engines because Yamaha no longer made whatever we were using, the 1200 and so on. Apart from that, all the other components are identical and have been for the full 25 years. And a superb prize once again, uh, HMS coming up with the touring car experience at the end of the year. That's right, yes, it's, uh, it's great. Simon Belcher, um, main, a big supporter of Legends, fantastic guy. He has offered his touring car for an experience and it will be for the, first, the top, I think we're going for the top six in the actual championship. We're delighted to be working with you on this 25th year, so happy anniversary, here's to a great year. Thank you very much, it's fantastic. And also I must thank uh, 24 Hour Solutions for supporting the actual event, uh, 100%. Um, and for a guy that's more excited about sponsoring for television than he is about driving, I think it's amazing. What a delight to see the World Legends champion Jordan O'Brien paying a visit a long way from home, Jordan. Yeah, just a bit, you know, not, not too far. This trip was a little last minute, I'd say, considering how uh, 24 hours ago I didn't have a plane ticket here. But I uh, figured I'd come and hang out, enjoy the good weather here. Uh, we haven't had so much of this great weather back home, so I wanted to come hang out and have fun, support the series, and, uh, you know, see some good people, good friends. And I think some of the drivers may be coming to you for advice. Any, any drivers that you think stand out as potential champions for us in the UK this year? Well, I mean, just like last year, you know, all the top contenders, you have uh, Sean Smith, John Mickle, you know, Nathan Anthony is really quick this year. You know, the first session out today, he was top, but uh, I think it's going to be a pretty hard charge by a lot of the cars. I mean, as we know, this championship, the, the top 15 cars are always pretty much within a second of each other. So it's no, no such thing as someone running away with it. It's going to be a good race no matter what. We hope you don't run away as well. We want to see you... Uh hopefully back on track at some time this year great to see you today best of luck with whatever you do we'll see you later on in our 25th anniversary year thank you phil turner first of all fantastic that you're sponsoring the television side of the championship this year thank you very much for that what i'd like to do is is go back and say it's a birthday for you because it's your first anniversary of your first race different conditions this year what have you learned in your first year well i've learned that it's a lot easier in the sunshine which is always nice the snow not so much fun um, the first year was, was really trying. I mean, it was hard. It's, it's a lot of car to learn. Um, but we've, we've learned all about different setups. We've learned different things from different teams in the paddock. And it's, it's, we've had more seat time, which is inevitably what, uh, what makes all the difference. But, uh, but most importantly, we're still enjoying it. And I think that's 90% of, the, 90 of why everybody's here, isn't it, at the end of the day, which is good. Have you set yourself any targets for this year? 
Um, it will be, we want to do better than last year, obviously. Um, we, uh, we've got some targets on tracks. We want to learn more. I mean, fundamentally, that's what we're here. We said originally that it was a three-year process. Um, first year really was just to learn the tracks, just, just to understand how the tracks were. Second year was really to understand how the car would behave on those tracks. And then the third year, hopefully, we'd, we'd really be able to push forward with it. Um, and we've still got that plan in process. And I think that's, that's what's driving everybody, including the team, forward to you know this year and then hopefully next year as well still carrying the help for heroes logos tell us a bit more about that we wanted to give something back through our corporate and social responsibility um, and uh, Help for Heroes were, were very keen to get us all on board. So we're taking the car and the team all over the country to all kinds of different motoring events uh, where we're there I said, with the car, the team, we've got lots of posters, lots of fun stuff. Um, and we take part in competitions and things like that against the public and it, it just it adds to that kind of fun atmosphere of, of Legends Racing and again just, uh, just raise a bit of money for, for quite a good charity. Well, Nick, uh, a great draw, certainly from our perspective, maybe not from yours, we'll get that. F front row for race one here at Brands Hatch. Yep, looking forward to it. Um, blue two, blue one, sorry, uh, on the outside line, but yeah, we'll see how we go in the first corner. A few changes over the winter. Steve Whitelegs moved on and uh, you're now in command of the team. Yep, it was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, in the right position to take on the team um, and we've got all the mechanics with it. And uh, yeah, they were grateful enough to, uh, to run us this year. What do you do over the winter? A lot of drivers do a little bit of testing, certainly have to do rebuilds and things like that, but what about yourself? Is it, is it business, racing, or a little bit of a mix? Business, no racing. Um, this year we've got a new car, um, it's been re uh, rebuilt. Um, we got uh, the chance to have one test, and um, we're here this weekend now to, to move forward with it. And as I say, that draw, that lottery for grid positions places you on the front. It's a, always a big crowd here at Brands Hatch. Does it make you a little bit nervous being off the front? Uh, yeah, slightly nervous, but it's a fantastic crowd and you get all the racing with the uh, reverse draw and the, the ball draw as such. So uh, I think it, it makes it interesting racing for the spectators. Well, Jack Parker, the season's underway. You've had the qualifying session. We've had the draw for grid positions and you're on the front. How's that feel? Um, a bit nerve wracking going into the first race, to be honest. Um, looking forward to getting back out there. The gridding is really tight. The times from practice are really, really tight. So it'd be interesting to see how um, it all goes to plan. Um, hopefully just keep reliability, just just keep KM in the points. So it'd be nice to have top three positions and wins, but we just won this year, just a nice good finish. In terms of race winning drivers here, I think you're number three in the, the table with uh, obviously John Mickle having a, a long career, he's got the most wins, but so it's somewhere you've been before winning, it's not going to be a problem for you? No, it's, um, it's uh, down to the day. People get uh, quicker, slower, depending on the circuit, depending on the weather conditions, uh, and obviously being the new season, we, we don't know where we all are yet, um, in terms of uh, race pace. So yeah, it's a bit nerve wracking going into the first race, but we'll definitely give it a good go this season, and yeah, just go out there and go and have a bit of fun. That was the two-seater Legends car that you've just seen, giving some demonstration laps here as part of the pace lap. And it was championship runner-up from last year, Steve Whiteleg, giving some passengers the ride of their life. On to race one, Jack Parker on pole position, Nick Bridgman alongside Marcus Pett and Miles Rumman row two, then Mike Schlup and Cy Haraway on row three. Watch for the lights to go out here at Brands Hatch, which they do. We are Legends Cars Racing. And it's a superb field that leads down. And look at Miles Rudman in black and yellow round the outside. Rudman challenging for the lead. On board. He's got past Jack Parker and into the lead. The entire field behind him as we go up into Druids under blue skies. Perfect race conditions at Brands Hatch. Rudman leads. Parker second. Marcus Pett is third. Connor Mills on the outside line of return east to the championship in car number 82. John Mickle, the reigning champion. All silver livery. It's all gone. Pear shaped to at the back. In car with Nathan Anthony was quickest in the qualifying session and that's a, a big bonus for Nathan in the unique Savan. You can see the blocked in window at the back. Great marketing tool, always popular with and gets gets tagged there by Sean Smith or gets hooked up with Sean Smith as Will Gibson goes off track in the 57. Swift recovery for Gibson. Miles Rudman out front. Jack Parker vying for second place at the moment. Here they come. They're starting to get a little bit more spread out, but still bunch, still great close racing there. Sean Smith up ahead of the 51. That's Paul Simmons, the reigning Masters champion. Nathan Anthony challenging hard, working hard at the wheel. 
So it's Rudman leading, Jack Parker, then Marcus Pett from Cy Haraway. Cy, of course, one of the rookies who won races last year. Looking back, Sean Smith still side by side with 29, Nathan Anthony. Nick Bridgman coming under pressure. Good driving for Bridgman, gives room inside and outside. Anthony gets around the outside line. I think Sean Smith was looking to the inside. On board with another with the returnee, Connor Mills. Started the uh, previous season. A, a lot of race wins under Connor's belt. Oh, Bill Reid off the circuit becomes, I think, our first retirement in the Bridgman Motorsport prepared car. As we, as we said, Nick Bridgman taking over what was the WTBS team, and that's Rob King, another returnee to the championship, going around the outside line, side by side with Nick Bridgman. Immediately ahead of them, we've got James Hall Morton, and King makes up the position on Nick Bridgman with Paul Simkis in behind now in the 99 car. Busy track wherever you look. The legends, of course, have uh, kept a, a stable specification over the years. They. Wherever they go, the racing is absolutely superb. They're not too big for the track, which a lot of Formula these days are, and it's all about entertainment. It's all about the drivers enjoying themselves. And of course, the race fans absolutely love the race action that they see. Simmons, Smith, Anthony, James Hall Morton in his dad's championship winning livery from a few seasons ago, so retro livery on that car. In van with Nathan Anthony, Still chasing Sean Smith, those two very close indeed in this opening race of the season. Remember, three races per round. Each racing weekend this year is a double header. And up the inside of Simmons goes Smith. Nathan Anthony about to follow suit under the Burton Power Bridge. They go in towards Druids and there's a little bit of contact. Anthony spins around. He was looking for a gap on the inside line. We're on board again with Nick Bridgman looking ahead at the number six car of Matt Rainbow. Newcomer to the championship this year. Nathan Anthony gets going again, swift recovery from Nathan, he'll get points for finishing, just not as many as he would have done further up the field. Meanwhile, Jack Parker coming under pressure from Marcus Pett. We've got two dark coloured cars at the front of the field at the moment. It's Miles Rudman leading from Cy Haraway, and on board with Connor Mills, chasing for third place at the moment. Connor in the silver and blue car, is chasing hard as they go across the line. Jack Parker there, coming under pressure from Marcus Pett, who looks around the outside as they go into Paddock. Welcome back to Brands Hatch. The battle is very much on for third place. John Mickle getting involved now as well. Remember, he was in orange last year. It's all silver this year in the number four car. And John always there or thereabouts in Legends. On board with Connor Mills. Looks at the inside line here of Jack Parker as they go along Cooper Strait. Coming up in towards Surtees. The race leaders are through. So it's still Miles Rudman being chased by Cy Haraway, but a good move by Connor Mills. Now Marcus Pett goes on the grass, round the outside line comes John Mickle, Jack Parker. Lost a couple of places in those manoeuvres, but will fight back. The thing you see about Legends is that it is racing. They, you see drivers get past, but then you see them repass. It is racing by definition. So many formulae these days don't offer that. Legends cars do, that's why they're still going after 25 years. Glenn Burtonshaw being chased by Phil Turner and Phil goes up the inside line, makes a neat pass there. Glenn not looking too happy at the moment in the 72, but Phil Turner making good progress, which is good to see. Meanwhile, John Mickle and Jack Parker, as you said, Jack Parker got passed, but we've got Tom Granger coming up as well in the black and white 26. Normally that car you will know is, is Rick Leggett's car, the Margrasil car. But it's a team car this year being shared by the two of them. And Tom, or Thomas if mum's watching, Granger, who is in that car, oh, it looks like, oh, a bit of smoke coming out of Glenn Burtonshaw's car, has managed to get past Phil Turner once again. Burtonshaw, a long-time Legends racer, does a bit of Caterham's racing as well these days, and Phil Turner's going to have a look, maybe see if he can pop a move on him here, going up into Surtees, having a look, good learning experience here for Phil, as, as we heard in the interview, second season of, of Legends Cars Racing. This is the battle for the lead though. Last year's rookie champion chasing rookie champion from the year before. Miles Rudman, the leader, they're getting involved. Other cars are closing in. There in 57 is Will Gibson recovering from his off earlier on in the race. But the battle for the lead comes towards us. Miles Rudman at the moment in front. Cy Haraway in second. Haraway all over the back of him. And now Connor Mills is starting to reel them in in third place. 
Mills is a man on the mission here. And Connor Mills started 12th on the grid. We ride on board with the Essex youngster closing in here. Through Clark Curve, along Brabham Strait, they'll tick off another lap. Crossing the line now, it's Rudman still in front. Look at Connor Mills, he goes high and wide into Paddock Hill Bend. Miles Rudman is going to be passed because Cy Haraway looking down the inside line. Mills is going to try and follow him through. Is there a gap? He very nearly, I thought, was going to pay a visit into the seventh car. But Connor knows what he's doing. He finds the room. Connor Mills is up into second place. It's Haraway leading. Mills second. Rudman now down to third, having got into the lead on the opening lap. Rob King. Will Gibson, Paul Simkis, all in the mix there, having a super battle together. And that's just outside the top ten of this massive field. Haraway leading. Now, Connor Mills would love to get a win on his return meeting, particularly in the opening race. He's going to be starting nearer the front in race two. He's worked his way through the field. Remember, the grid was drawn by Ballot. And Mills goes for the outside line. Mills going for the lead, but Haraway is having none of it. Here they come down towards the line and it's Haraway still in front they go on to the last lap now that's Mike Schlupp being passed there by Nick Bridgman in the 68 he's having a super race Guy Fastre the Belgian in the mix as well but back with the race leaders and it's Haraway still still there for Mills and they've all caught up all of these cars are in with a shout of the win although I think the money's going to go on the top three at the moment it's Haraway still there for Mills and Rudman Thomas Granger is now in fourth Superb racing from the legend. Sean Smith is up there as well now. So Haraway coming under pressure from Mills, who will look to the inside line. Haraway again having none of it. But look at that. It's three wide for second. And Thomas Granger goes up the inside line into third. Deposes Miles Rudman, the, the long-time leader, into fourth place. But Cy Haraway, I think he's going to get a Brands Hatch win here. Haraway, the rookie champion, is going to get it. It's side by side. Look at that for second place. Haraway wins. Connor Mill second. Thomas Granger nipping through for third. What a finish from race one of the 2019 season for the Legends. As we said, no problems, only solutions in Legends Cars Racing. Haraway, Mills and Granger, your top three from Rudman, Mickle and Smith. Marcus Petnex from Jack Parker. James Hall, Morton, Rob Fountain completes the top 10, 11th was Paul Simmons from Will Gibson and Rob King. Paul Simkis next from Matt Rainbow. He's uh, a newcomer, Mike Schlup. Nick Bridgman next from Guy Fastre, Nathan Anthony and Gerard McCosh. And the finish is completed by Phil Turner. Fastest lap of the race went to Connor Mills, who was in second position, 55.210 his lap time. So, Cy si Haraway, not content with being rookie champion, coming back, underlining that, and bagging your first win of, of the season in race number one of the year. What a way to start the season. Yeah, I mean, we couldn't have started any better, could we? Uh, it was a tough race. You know, I was sat there on the first three rows, and I thought, I've got John behind me, Miles in front of me, and obviously Jack and a few others. And uh, the car was fantastic, up until a point where the clutch pedal went to the floor. And then I was, I was a bit of an injured animal then. I was just make a move, stay to the inside, so I had to defend really hard to Connor. But that's what I'm here to do, get the wins, score the points. So if we get another 41 of those, I think we'll be all right at the end of the season. Seems to have been a successful race for returnees, Connor. How long is it since you've been in the Legends car? A year or so, nearly? Yeah, around a year now, um, since we was last here last year with a bit of bad luck. But in that race, it luck turned around. A good second position and a very close finish. Very typical Legends close finish at the end. Yeah, I thought I thought I might just get it. I was hoping someone would give me a push down the straight, um, and I think I would have had it. But I need to make some friends, it seems. So um, yeah, I mean, second place, first race of the year from 12th, can't complain. Thomas, that was a, a great start. Coming through from 18th on the grid up onto a podium. Congratulations. Tell us about the race. Thank you. Um, first race back for two, two and a half years. So uh, pretty happy with that. To be fair, didn't expect that when I woke up this morning. So no, it's good. And, uh, of course, one of the stories is that you're sharing the car with, with Rick this year. It's a team car. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm driving it today. Rick is driving it tomorrow. Um, and then with the team car, you can go on like that, or you can do one weekend, one driver, one weekend, the other driver. There's, it's a real good way to go Legends racing if it's a case of that you can't get a full budget to go racing on your own. So it's, it's a good way to go racing. Paul, starting up at the sharp end for race number two, but let's just wind the clock back a little bit to race one and some good pace from you there. 
yeah, my best uh, best lap time ever at this circuit, so I'm happy with that. Um, I've, I'm a diff different pack now. I've, I've kept with people I haven't been able to keep with before, so I'm uh, I'm definitely progressing in the right direction. That's really good. What's that down to? Is it studying other people's data or doing uh, test days or maybe even going on a simulator, something like that? Well, over the, over the winter period, we had the car stripped down completely to nut and bolt rebuild. Um, it feels more stable. I've got more grip. Pro, Pro 24 race shop, they uh, they did that for us and, and they've done a fantastic job. So the car's right. I can now work on the corner speed, work on my braking markers and just push that a little bit more. So. Obviously, we chatted to you before races, but there seems to be a little bit of confidence now uh, coming with you, a little bit more confidence. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the more you race, the more confident you get. Like I say, I'm, I'm racing with a different group now. I'm racing with the guys who can win races. So my best ever finish is a third, but I'm hoping to, uh, to better that at some, time, some point in the near future, maybe in the next race, let's hope so. So for race two, reverse grid, James Hall Morton, who started at the back in race one, is on pole. Rob King alongside Paul Simmons and Paul Simkis on row two from Connor Mills and Will Gibson. Sean Smith and Nathan Anthony on row four. John Mickle with Rob Fountain on row five. Behind them, race one winner, Cy Haraway, and then Mike Schlup in car number three. We are legends racing already for race two. Rob King on the outside, James Hall Morton on the inside. Watch for Connor Mills there, he's challenging for third in silver and blue. Paul Simmons has got that at the moment, but it's James Hall Morton, the youngster, who leads them at Halewoods, up Halewoods Hill in towards Druids for the first time. Simmons third, Connor Mills looking up the inside line. This is always very crowded as they go through Druids for the first time when you're unleashing the best part of 30 cars, evenly matched in a reverse grid, but look how well they behave themselves. So many other championships you watch and learn from this. No bumping, no boring. You're going to get some occasionally, but nothing this time. Nathan Anthony again renews battle with Sean Smith in the 21. And again, a very crowded field. There's Cy Haraway in 83. Championship leader, of course, with that win in race number one. Last year's champion, multi-champion John Mickle right behind him. On board with Connor Mills, challenging Rob King. Looks on the inside line. He's going for second place. That's James Hall Morton out front. James scored a points finishing podium here at Brands Hatch last year, looking for a to, to better that and get an actual third place. He was fourth on the road, but a non-point scoring Belgian in front of him in the last round. Miles Rudman, again, looking to make progress through the field. One of the fancied runners, so many fancied runners for this year's championship. But it's Hall Morton leading from Mills, King, Simmons, 57. Will Gibson is there as well. Miles Rudman making progress as well in black and yellow. Easy car to pick out. Will Gibson, another race-winning driver. I think last year was the year that we had probably the most amount of different race winners in Legends for many, many seasons. It's always close, it's always competitive, but we just had that extra little sparkle of magic last year, which I think is going to carry through to this year, and certainly today has been wonderful so far. So Hall Morton out front, on board with Nathan Anthony again, working hard in the Savan 29, down through Clark Curve onto Brabham straight. Paul Simmons manages to pop the move on Rob King. Will Gibson follows around the outside line. Then we've got Sean Smith, Miles Rudman in the mix as well, followed by Cy Haraway. Those two virtually locked together, all meeting as Connor Mills challenges for the lead. Mills looks on the inside line. James Hall Morton on the outside, and Connor Mills is through. Mills here looking for a very good, healthy point score because you're an MB who's on the podium in race one. If he's on the podium here, He'll be top point scorer as Rudman dives to the inside and makes a line. The more I try, oh, and Will Gibson takes a spin. The 57 car is, I think, gently collected by another car, but no damage done other than to the points potentially being scored by him. There's Phil Turner up ahead of Bill Reid. So uh, Phil's aim was to get close to other guys and raise them. We've seen him doing that in this meeting in the 24-hour solution car. Miles Rudman being bump drafted now which you can do you can pick up another car two cars in theory run quicker together than one on their own and that's one of the reasons why you see so much place change look at this shot look at Tom Granger on the outside line of Nathan Anthony and he's going to try and squeeze through on the inside line there was a wee bit of contact there Rob King goes across the track sideways and Druids hopefully they've all seen him yes they have could have been nasty bad enough for Rob King returning to the championship this year he's got the paces Rob King but that was just an unfortunate thing of some very, very close racing. Conor Mills still out front, just, well, out of shot at the moment, with James Hall Morton living with him at the moment, pace-wise. 
and those two will be keen to try and break away at the front of the field if at all they can. There's Rob King recovering. Battle for the lead here, and I'll tell you what, Connor Mills is under pressure here from James Hall Morton in the 32. Both of these youngsters really in legends terms and James Hillmore not being left at the moment as they climb up through Druids it's Connor Mills the leader did look at uh, it starts off in karting did Connor Mills and then went into single seater racing with Formula 4 didn't have the budget to progress up the ladder undoubtedly has the talent as Sean Smith has talent as well looks down the inside line of Paul Simmons John Mickle about to try and follow through the defending champion John Mickle race leaders coming into Surtees though and look at James Hall Morton here he's got some confidence this youngster now we saw it building last year and looking for a podium result here Cy Haraway chasing the reigning champion Nathan Anthony and Tom Granger busy challenging them this is Bill Reid up ahead of Gerard McCosh Gerard an occasional racer non non-championship not entered into the championship so starts in a gentleman's group from the back of the grid having a good race here with Bill Reed in the 67 car and that's Napoleon the pig on the back as we've probably mentioned before meanwhile Mills and Hall Morton having a super race glad to see James dad Pete recovering from his winter injuries Miles Rudman is up into third place what a drive by Rudman as well through the field in this one Will Gibson on the inside line of Mike Schlupp there in the number three car on board with Nick Bridgman, Marcus Pett challenging him, gets really close as to go to Graham Hill Ben. They run a little bit wide, they've got to be careful of track limits as Bridgman now comes under pressure from Marcus Pett. And Pett goes through on the inside line, very neatly done, into the left hand at Surtees, right hander at McLaren. That continues round into clearways where they are now. Bridgman putting a bit of pressure on to try and get back into the mix. And we've got Will Gibson in the black and blue car on the inside line. And again, when you go on board with Nick Bridgman, you can see there was hardly any space on the inside line. So Bridgman goes across the line. Let's have a look and see if we can see. There it is, the 57 car, Will Gibson makes the move neatly, efficiently, down through into Paddock Hill Bend. So it's still Hall Morton in second place, chasing Connor Mills with Miles Rudman in third, Sean Smith in fourth position, then John Mickle, who always seems to bang in those points finishes. And Paul Simmons coming under pressure from Thomas Granger. Mickle fifth in race number one, so steady points for Mickle. And they're going to count because remember the winner of the round is the top point scorer over all three races on the day, not the winner of the final. So you have to be consistent right the way through. A DNF can really hit your points hard as we watch the leaders again. Now James Hall Morton is having a go for the lead. Look at this, they're bump drafting across the line. And that is James Hall Morton saying, come on, we'll get away from the pack. And also Connor Mills, I've got the same pace. This is a great piece of legends racing between the two. Mills gets away as they go up Halewoods, but Hall Morton will close in. He's definitely showing his rival that he's got pace here. So it's Mills out front, James Hall Morton. Hall Morton looking for his first win. I tell you what, there are no nerves showing off the track. That is Thomas Granger, podium finisher in race one, is off. It looks like an engine problem for Thomas. As we go back to the race lead, it, this is a thrilling battle between these two. Mills and Hall Morton having an absolute humbinger of a race here. And James has got to try and suss out where he can get past. He can get level with him as we saw, or get right up behind him on the straight and bump draft. Coming onto the main straight now, is he going to bump draft him again? No, goes to the outside line, and they're side by side as they cross the line. James Hall gets his nose in front. They're onto the last lap. If he repeats that move on the next lap, on this lap, he will win the race, but he's still got it all to do. Rudman and Smith dicing for third place. Sean Smith trying to get through into third. James Hall going to have a look at the inside line, but Connor Mills has got that covered as they go into Druids now. Out of Druids. Down Graham Hill Bend, Sean Smith's up to third, Miles Rudman is fourth now, but we watch the battle for the lead. Along Cooper Strait, half a length or so behind at the moment is Hall Morton, takes a wider line here. This could add up to a little bit of extra momentum for him as they go through Surtees. Now into McLaren, up in towards Clearways, Hall Morton chasing. Remember, on the last lap, he got his nose in front by the time they got to the line, and he needs to do that this time. But Mills goes across, grabs a little bit of that outside line. Here comes Hall Morton, he's going to have a go. And here he comes, he's trying to draw level, but as they come up towards the flag, it is Mills that just takes it from James Hall Morton. Possibly, James showed his colours a little bit too early, maybe, in that race, and it's Mills that hangs on. Hall Morton second. 
Sean Smith in third ahead of Miles Rudman. John Mickle in fourth from Paul Simmons and Cy Haraway. Nathan Anthony eighth, Jack Parker ninth. The top 10 completed by Paul Simkiss from Marcus Pett and Will Gibson. Matt Rainbow comes through for 13th from Nick Bridgman and Mike Schlupp. Then Guy Fastray, Robert King, Gerard McCosh, Bill Reed, and Phil Turner completing the finishes in 20th place. Tom Granger had a DNF in that one, as we saw he pulled up there on the way up towards Druids, but did get the consolation of fastest lap. Connor, congratulations, first win of the year. The return is looking like a success at the moment. Yeah, it's looking good. A second and a first, we can't complain about that. That one went a bit more to plan. We started a bit further towards the front. Everything went to plan at the start. I managed to get to the front and just get my head down. So it was good. And James gave you a race, didn't he? He did, he did. Luckily, I kept, I kept giving him the signal to push me the whole way round. And he did, luckily, because um, we managed to get a nice gap and we could just tussle it out on the last, uh, on the last lap. But no, it, he had a great, we had a great battle. I thought he almost had me on the first corner, but I managed to hold it off, so it was good. James, what a superb race. Talk us through those last few laps in particular. Well, uh, from the, when I saw Connor come in and he got past me, he gave me a little hand signal and that was the, that's when I knew then to crack on and go. Uh, so we worked as a, a brilliant pair. The lap before the last lap, I sized him up to come past on the start finish straight. Got him that time, but on the last lap, Connor knows what he's doing, he's a good driver. He just held me back a bit at the last corner and I just couldn't quite get the run on him, but I'm happy with second. Sean, the two lads were a little bit away down the road, but the midfield battles there were typical legends action that was hard work it was really hard work um we come sort of middle of the pack i suppose um i was just working with miles just trying to get him and try and move up to the uh, to the front too but they got a bit of a start on us so we went far away it's a game of chess isn't it yeah you gotta pick your drivers that you work with um just work your way through the pack Rob, returning to the championship last year. Pace was there in race number one, but sadly, issues. What's gone on? Yeah, we think it's either for an electrical or fuel issue. Um, the warm up lap was, was okay, and then the engine started to misfire, so I had to pull across. Um, the annoying thing is, we come back in the pits and it struck up straight away, so it's um, just going through everything. We've got some spare leads, spare coils, put them on, but uh, one of them things, unfortunately. Thomas Fast is slapping that one, but then you disappeared. What happened? Uh, it's, it's blown up. <laughs> There's a big hole in the engine block. OK, so it was going well. That, people say that often happens. The engine goes best just before it goes bang. Was that what happened with you? Yeah, it must be definitely in this case, yeah. yeah so. And talk us through what's happening, because obviously you, legends have three races a day normally, um, and there's not that much time between race two and three, so you've got to get it, get it out and sorted very quickly. Well, yeah, I mean, we're trying to whip it out now and see if we can get another one back in for, for, ne for the next race. But if not, then we'll wait, wait till Rick so Rick can do it tomorrow. Top point scorer on the day so far is Connor Mills. He starts 16th on the group with Cy Haraway, second in the championship next to him. Miles Rudman, the row ahead of him with Sean Smith. They're the top four point scorers. The guys who haven't had the rub of the green so far at the front, Nick Bridgman and Mike Schlupp, row one. Rob Fountain and Robert King, row two. Then Nathan Anthony and Paul Simkis. We are getting ready to start race three. Away we go. Breaking ranks there from row four was Marcus Pett. They're heading down into Paddock Hill Bend. And it's Nick Bridgman that leads down into Paddock Hill Bend with Rob Fountain following him through in the 31 car into second place. Challenging for third is the van of Nathan Anthony. Rob King to the outside is fourth. Will Gibson looking up the inside line and he's challenging for fifth place, but so is everybody else because they're four wide around Druids. And it's Nick Bridgman that leads. This will be a big confidence builder for Nick. He did a great job at Paddock Hill Bend. He's done a super job around Druids and Graham Hill Bend is still in front as we ride on board with Miles Rudman trying to deal with reigning champion John Mickle. John fifth in the championship points uh, scored today so far. And remember the top point scoring driver starts at the back of the group. We've got a number of drivers also sort of starting behind them. The gentleman group with Phil Turner, Bill Reed, Gerald Mikoski, Fastray, Matt Rainbow, the newcomer in the mix as well. Changed for the lead because Rob Fountain goes through and Nick Bridgman was going to do a bit of bump drafting there. Fair play. Nick is gaining experience, gaining confidence. That's exactly what you need to do as a newcomer to racing. And Nick is really enjoying it. Here's Connor Mills trying to work his way through the field. Top point scorer so far. Sai Haraway to his outside. Mills trying to make the pass. 
Bridgman down in fourth at the moment and about to be gobbled up by James Hall-Morton on the outside line. Will Gibson in black and blue. New livery for him this year as well. So many drivers changed their liveries over the course of the winter. Rob King is next up. So Mick coming under pressure here from Will Gibson who will look on the inside line. He does! Will Gibson, of course, who bookended wins at the start and end of the season last year. Nathan Anthony deserves a bit of luck in this one. Rob Fountain just eked out there as through on the inside line now comes Nathan Anthony challenging for second position but it's Marcus Pett who is the race leader at the moment we're hearing noises from race control that Marcus might have jumped the start he did look slightly out of position as they came across the line it's, it's difficult it's a difficult thing to do knowing exactly when you can break Rex Nathan Anthony spins around my goodness me as everybody else made it past him we hope they have that was a very scary moment for Nathan Anthony facing the wrong way with the full field all together at this stage of the race hopefully he'll carry on this has not been Nathan's day started fifth on the grid let's have a look and see how that unfolded so coming into paddock yeah there was no knock or anything just uh, just just missed out they're just going to go and everybody makes it past thankfully no damage done there but the car just got away from him at Paddock Hill Bend he will recover hopefully and have a another bite of the cherry and try and get some consolation points in this race Nick Bridgman dicing with Jack Parker so Parker through the inside line ahead of them in silver and light blue the familiar livery now to us of Connor Mills who is aiming to be top point scorer and as I say remember it's the top point scorer on the day as James Will Morton has a little moment their top point scorer on the day that will take the overall trophy it's one, two, three, not on the race, but on the top point scorers on the day. So you have to be consistent. And you have to work hard to come through the field in order to do that. John Mickle putting James Hall Morton under pressure. Cy Haraway spins it out. Cy Haraway, the race one winner. A shed load of points in race one. No mucking about from Cy. Straight back on the gas on the exit of Druids to get back into the race. But goodness me, we're seeing all sorts of problems in this race with... A spin for Nathan Anthony. Cy Haraway, one of the first big hitters points-wise to suffer a spin, so that's not going to help his cause. Cross the line they go. Move here being made by Sean Smith, trying to get past on the outside line of Miles Rudman into Paddock. Miles Rudman and in front of him is Rob Fountain in the 31 car that misfire that Rob was talking about seems to be okay it's holding up pretty well at the moment Rob though started in the second row of the grid and he finds himself a little bit further back than that so some work to do but remember Rob returns to the championship last year the 2000 champion he's actually got less experience than three quarters of the legends field in terms of legends racing despite being a champion in legends cars uh, really good to see him back and thoroughly enjoying his racing is Rob Fountain as we saw now as James Hall Morton looks down the inside line challenging for the lead just out of shot there is Fountain still in the mix here of potentially what could be a, a podium battle here Rudman chasing him hard We've got John Mickle in third place at the moment James Hall Morton ahead of him Connor Mills at the back of this pack looks at the inside line of Miles Rudman that's a significant pass there for Connor Mills passing Rudman who is third in the points at the moment and Rudman will be able to fight back as we said these cars can race if you get past equal pace you've got the opportunity to come back as Rob Fountain looks to the outside line of Will Gibson Sean Smith to the outside line of Connor Mills Miles Rudman in the mix as well we're looking at the lead pack it's now uh, James Hall Morton that leads this one so it's Hall Morton in front John Mickle second Marcus Pett is in third place and a spin that's Sean Smith spinning and Connor Mills has spun as well Connor Mills the top point scorer of the day spins around now is there fluid down there Sean Smith was looking very handy for maybe a points podium this weekend here's the replay oh, a little bit of contact sends two cars around there might still be some fluid down there and Connor Mills sadly is out of the race it's not going to be a final victory it's not going to be an overall win on the day so we've seen problems for Cy Haraway who is still running We've seen a problem now for Connor Mills and Sean Smith. So some big hitters, metaphorical big hitters, of course, uh, going out and having issues in this race. So it's James Hall Morton now the leader. 
and back going out there Sean Smith so Sean Smith into retirement we saw him spin but he's retiring as well this is the quartet for the lead and John Mickle comes through Mickle slices through the inside line of Hall Morton so Mickle's got the lead there's a yellow flag there Rob Fountain up into second place did he make the pass under yellows that remains to be seen so James Hall Morton is third we've got green flags now they can resume racing but it's John Mickle the defending champion who's been consistent all day long John knows how to win Legends Cars Championship. He should do he's won four of them. Three of them on the bounce. He was the champion who succeeded Rob Fountain. He was the 2001 champion and has raced many different formulae over the years. Look at the bump draft in there. Rob Fountain being bump drafted by James Hall Morton, who comes out of it, goes wide, passes Fountain going into Paddock Hill. Ben, brave manoeuvre around the outside line. Fountain's going to have the inside into Druids. Marcus Peck coming back into the mix as well. This a quartet for the lead. And Rob Fountain knows his race craft, he knows the inside can pay dividends here. But James Hall Morton knows if he sticks it out on the outside line, he can grab the inside for Graham Hill, but he's a little bit far back. It's Rob Fountain hanging on to second position. Well, not hanging on, he's charging, isn't he? And about to have a go at John Mickle. So Mickle, the race leader, we've not had a podium interview with John Mickle yet, and that's a very unusual scenario to be in. We're, we're picking up here on Paul Simmons being chased by Guy Fastre with Mike Schlerp, who started on the front row, enjoying the battle with his teammate Paul Simmons, the reigning Masters champion for the uh, older group of drivers. None of them thank me for saying that. So this is the battle for fourth position. Miles Rudman busy challenging Marcus Pett. Rob Fountain down the inside line now. He's going to have a look at John Mickle here as they go up into Druids. Fountain's got the inside line. He's got his nose in front. James Hallmort to the outside line. And it's Fountain that leads. Hallmort challenging on the outside with Miles Rudman and Marcus Pett coming up as well. And now James Hallmorton from challenging for the lead is now fighting for third place with Marcus Pett. Miles Rudman coming up as well. Here is Phil Turner in the 247 car. He sees the leaders coming through, pulls over, fountains through. Oh, bang! Mike Schlerp into the barrier. Mike, I think, will be OK, but not what we want to see. Not Mike's day today. He was very near a podium here at Brands Hatch last year. It's not going to be today as the battle for the lead continues. And Rob Fountain is past now. Mickle up into the lead again. James Hall Morton comes out of the slipstream. Goes through into second, high and wide at Paddock. James Hallmorton is not afraid to use the outside line. Unlike a lot of drivers, James, as a youngster, didn't do carts. He came in and raced on the short ovals and learned his experience that way. It just goes to prove you don't need to spend a fortune on, on kart racing to come and race legends or race anything for that matter. Uh, James was a, a relatively late starter racing. He's got the full support of his family, feeling a very proud dad, Pete. I know he was chuffed to bits with that podium earlier on. It looks like another podium here in the offing for him but it's still John Mickle the multi-champion whatever you put John Mickle in he will win he knows how to do it and he knows how to collect points and win championships as well little look back here Rob King having a better race Jack Parker next up Nathan Anthony who's recovered superbly Nathan Anthony here from the problem he remember he spun earlier on in the race and Anthony is inside the top 10 easily inside the top 10 what a great recovery from the man who was fastest at the outset in practice here today. Really showing some good form. Looks to the outside line of Jack Parker, who's on the outside of Rob King. King comes sort of halfway across track, going into Paddock to get a little bit of a run through Paddock. Down to the bottom of the hill, here's the battle for the lead. James Allmorton's going to the outside line here of John Mickle. And he's got the inside coming into Graham Hill Bend. James Allmorton's got the lead. And Rob Fountain's going to follow through. Fountain through to second. Mickle down to third. But John's got the race craft. He'll know how to fight back. Miles Rudman is fourth. Driving into the sun along Cooper Strait. Left-hander at Surtees. Right-hander at McLaren. And it's James Allmorton. Now, has he played his hand too early here? Because there is a theory, as we saw with James getting involved earlier on and making a move a lap early on Connor Mills. Has he done? Has he broken away too soon here? John Mickle, now, look at that. I said he'd fight back. He goes back out on the last lap into second place. Rob Fountain is down to third. Miles Rudman and Marcus Pett. There is going to be a time penalty for Marcus Pett for that out-of-position start we're hearing from race control, but he'll race on the tarmac, side by side for second, Mickle on the outside line, Rudman coming up as well, with Marcus Pett still fighting for a podium on the road, but it's James Hallmorton out front, he might be buoyed by the fact there's a fight behind, that might help him, but Rob Fountain would love to get a win on his comeback in Legends Cars Racing, 
So it's Fountain chasing hard here. Hasn't had a podium on his return, but could well get one here. So this day's racing has had everything for me. Oh, there's a puff of smoke from James Hallmorton. Is he OK? They're going through clearways, through Clark Curve for the last time. This could be James Hall Morton's first win or a comeback win for Fountain. Here's the run to the flag. Fountain comes out, has a go, but it's James Hall Morton that takes the win. Fountain second, John Mickle is third. What a day's racing, what a race and a maiden win for James Hall Morton. Now, congratulations to him. Back on the podium is Rob Fountain on his return. John Mickle third for Miles Rudman, Robert King, Jack Parker, Nathan Anthony and Nick Bridgman. Paul Simkis in ninth. Matt Rainbow, the newcomer, comes through from the back into 10th. Paul Simmons next from Guy Fastre, Marcus Pett and Cy Haraway. Gerard McCosh next up ahead of Bill Reid. And sadly, problems for Will Gibson, but uh, he was the last finisher in 17th place. Fastest lap to Connor Mills before his retirement. Superb, superb race and a great day's racing here at Brands. Oh, James, it, it's come. Congratulations on taking your first win. How does it feel? Uh, proper over the moon, happy for everybody, um, and it means a lot more seeing as the car this year is in my dad's winning colours, and we got the, uh, the sad news yesterday of an old family friend and an ex-sponsor passed away yesterday, so that one's for Tony, um, and I know I said that after the second race, just being beaten by Connor, that the win will come soon, but I didn't think that soon to be the next race, so we're all over the moon. Rob, a return to the championship last year, and now a return to the podium. Congratulations on a fine second place. Um, talk us through your race. No, it all went, uh, like I say, pretty well for a start. I got a good start. I was second row back. Um, Nathan Anthony got past me and then he had a bit of a spin. I dropped back a few places because my, my gear sh uh, shift was actually playing up, so it's quite hard. And I lost fourth and fifth through down the straight. But that came good again and I was able to get back, I think, back into first. And then I dropped back down to second. So, yeah, it was all good. John, finally get to catch up with you today, defending champion, uh, third place in the final and also on the podium overall on the day, so that's not a bad start really. No, Brands Hatch first meeting out, everybody's a bit keen, everybody's got new fresh stuff, it's very hard around here and you can see that by the day's racing that really nine or ten drivers could win and Brands is very hard to overtake, um, so I'm happy to get the quick steel car in a podium, top three. Be good. If I can do the same tomorrow and walk away from here, then we'll be good. A firm start to season. So, Miles, we didn't see you in terms of the race podiums, but you're on the podium for the day because the trophies are given out in terms of the top three point scorers over yeah. all three races. So, a consistent day's racing from you. Yeah, uh, very consistent. Um, three fourths. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, feel I could have done a lot better, but. You know, there's a long season ahead and it's the first round, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do tomorrow. Well, James, the points have been totted up and you're the overall winner, so not only do you get your first race win, but you've got your overall round win as well on points and you're leading the championship going into day two. How does that feel? Still lost for words to be fair at the moment. Everybody's over the moon for me, which I really appreciate that. And uh, I think my dad's more happy than I am at the moment. I, I ain't seen him stop grinning yet. But no, when someone told me that uh, you think I've just got the most points by 15, I went, you're having a laugh. And then they read out my name and I thought, oh, hey, we've done all right here today then. I was going to ask, you know, how aware are you in the third race of the day of what the point situation is regarding the overall situation or are you just concentrating on, on the race you're in? I just concentrate, concentrate on uh, taking one race at a time and just seeing where I finish. And I were over the moon that I got the win. And then for somebody to say, oh, you've got first overall, I thought, nah. But, it's one of them, we're happy about it and uh, the car's roughly in one piece. I'm going to have to go for a walk up to Druids to find the rest of my front wing, but I'll do that later on after I've had a beer. <laughs> Great way to end, thanks for that. Congratulations, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Here's the table after round one. James Hall Morton leads by 15 points from Miles Rudman and defending champion John Mickle. Reigning rookie champion Cy Haraway is fourth from Connor Mills. Jack Parker in sixth ahead of Paul Simmons and Sean Smith. Well, it's a great day's racing here at Brands Hatch for the opening round of the 2019 Legends Cars National Championship coverage brought to you by 24 Hour Solutions. Please join us next time for round two here at Brands Hatch. Thanks for watching and bye for now.